there's a couple of components to lake health, uh, but I, I think the most important component from my perspective, our perspective, is, is what we re refer to as peripheral arterial chill disease. Sometimes people call it PAD or PVD. Um, it's one of the manifestations of atherosclerosis, but I think it gets less um, uh, uh, attention paid to it because most people, rightly so, are focusing on uh, uh, heart disease, coronary artery disease, and, and the effects of heart attacks, etc. But with the lower extremity, peripheral arterial disease can cause significant pain that interferes with walking. Um, and at, in more serious uh, uh, versions or, or, uh, of it, it can lead to really severe complications such as gangrene, ulcers, and potentially even limb loss amputations. The person who's at risk for any type of atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, plaque buildup is, is at risk for lower extremity problems, and that includes people who are smokers, either former or current, uh, people who have diabetes, um, high cholesterol, uh, patients with hypertension, and then there is a subgroup who have just really significant family history of early problems, either with circulation in their legs, circulation um, in their, uh, for, to their heart, strokes from carotid artery problems, those are, those are the main patients we're talking about. When patients have this problem and it's producing symptoms, they'll walk a certain distance. It usually will come on either quicker if they go uphill or walk upstairs, or they walk fast, and it'll be in their large muscle groups, so the thigh, the calf are the you know, most common. And after a certain amount of walking, they'll feel either an ache, a heaviness, a burn, um, or a pain. It'll go away when they stop, but if they tried to walk the same distance again, then um, they would get the pain again. We're talking about a systemic process. So we don't want to just say, okay, you have leg pain, you have an artery blockage, let's do surgery and you know, get you into the operating room. What we want to do is say, okay, you have a problem with cholesterol buildup with atherosclerosis. Let's start at the basics. Are you smoking? If so, you have to stop. Let's help you. Do you have diabetes? Is your diabetes well controlled? Do you need a specialist to help with your control? Is your blood pressure under control? Are you on medications that will improve your circulation? So things that will affect the platelets, typically an aspirin or that type of medication. Um, are you on a cholesterol medication? If you're on a cholesterol medication, should you be on more or different or higher dose to really improve the what we describe as the bad cholesterol? So that's the first thing. The second thing is to do a full identification of how much it's interacting or interfering with your lifestyle. So for instance, if you're a 75, 80-year-old retired person, and you really don't do a lot of walking, but every once in a while you'll go on a longer than usual walk and you'll get some pain. But the, most of the days you don't have any discomfort. We want to document what your circulation level is, adjust your, what we talk, talked about before we refer to as risk factor modification. But we won't necessarily even think about doing anything because it's really not affecting your life. Whereas if you're a 50 year old postman who's smoking and can't do their route, and you can only walk a half a block, we still focus on all the risk factor aspects of things, but we have to think realistically of how can we help you walk more. We start pretty much almost every evaluation there with an angiogram, and that's a blood vessel test where we put a little catheter inside the artery, inject contrast, evaluate the, level, the levels and degree of blockage, and then at the same time, if we can do something, what we describe as percutaneously without incisions, such as a balloon angioplasty to open up the narrowed artery, or a balloon angioplasty plus a stent, which is a metal framework that sort of props open the artery, um, we would do that. In certain patients, either initially or after treatment with other methods haven't, haven't worked or haven't been as successful as hoped, we would consider a surgical option. Uh, the surgical options generally are um, what we refer to as a bypass, which is similar to the heart bypass, but just 
converted to the leg. So we would often use the same vein that we use for heart bypass, but in the, in the leg. And we, you know, to, not to minimize it, we're rerouting the plumbing. So we use your own body's vein generally to take blood from the good artery, go around the blocked artery to a lower blood vessel that then can give you now new blood supply to your calf, your foot, your thigh, wherever it may be. A lot of the patient population are older and they're used to working hard, accepting sort of whatever has happened and if they have pain, they just pass it off because, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm living, I'm fine. Yeah, I have pain in my leg every day, but so what? That shouldn't be the, the general way things go because number one, we can help, but number two, you may need other minor treatments or medications adjustments that will affect the other parts of your, your life. So um, in general, if patients are having reproducible pain in, the, in their muscle groups with walking, they should start like as always with their primary care doctor and discuss whether you know a uh, referral to a vascular surgeon specialist is, is the way to go.